will be a blessing to you. As I prepared this word, it was a blessing to me just reading over it. So I'll, I'll just wait till you guys get back to your, your seats. I promise Sister Becky I wasn't going to take too long. <laughs> honoring mothers and if we can go to Psalms 127 verse 1 through 5 Just give me an amen when you guys find it You know, we, we as children, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a parent, I'm a, I'm a dad, 
you know, and I, growing up, I could say stuff, my mom is here, right, she can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they work hard. They work hard. You know, their, their, their job doesn't, doesn't end at, at 5 o'clock, right? They're always on the go. They're always looking and caring for their kids, you know. Uh, they want to make sure their kids are fed, right? Some of us are already, you know, a little bit too much caring night on the heat <laughs> part. But you know what? That's that's something that God has put in them, right? The totally different than dads, right? And the first characteristic I want to look at is the characteristic of joy, right? Many people think that joy and happiness are the same, but if you're not. Joy comes from having a, a right relationship with God, with our God, our eternal creator. When things are right between us and God, we can experience the joy that comes from the Lord, right? But happiness is a feeling, right? Happiness is a feeling. We feel when things in our realm are going well. Joy is not easily lost because our relationship with God does not change because of conditions and circumstances. Right? Sometimes we, we know we have that right relationship with God. You know, our joy doesn't change. It doesn't matter what what's hits, you know. Something might some bad circumstances might come, but we know that God is in control, right? Even even when we are in the valley, we have the full assurance that God loves us, right? Amen. Right? Even no matter what we're going through, God God is there for us. He loves us. Mm -hmm. Right? And that we are his children, right? He loves us. That we are his children. Regardless of what's taking place, God is at work in our lives. Working together for our for our good. God is in total control of all our of all things that are going on in our lives, right? He's he's wise, right? God is wise, all wise. He is all knowing and all powerful. Right. God is always on our side, he's desiring the very best for us. Amen. He's always, you know, he, he, you know, just like like moms, you know, or dads, you know, says, hey, we want the best for our kids, right? right? We want stuff. We want to give them stuff that we didn't have, right? Sometimes we do that more damage than good on that part, but that's what we desire. Amen. That's what God desires for us, you know, for us to give us the best. There is nothing that we can do that would cause God to stop loving us, right? But they may, they may, he may not love the things that we do, but he still loves us, right? You know, he, he, he sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's an ultimate love right there. You know, he, he will always be found loving us. Therefore, no child of God should ever allow Satan to rob them of their joy. Right? Satan does not have the power to take your joy from you. The only way you can lose it is if you give it away. Right? You know, we all we all have uh, our own free will, right? So we have our own free will to give that joy up. But you know what? We choose not to, right? We choose not to. We, we have the joy of the Lord in us, right? And then looking at a, a, a jo the joy of a mother, joy is the greatest gift she could possibly give her family. Right? It is such a blessing from above to have a joyful mother who regardless of the disappointments and difficulties of everyday life she continues to go about with a joyful spirit that's awesome right because like like my wife was praying earlier you know, some some moms have gone to sleep some really doozies right but they still keep going it doesn't stop them joyful mothers are always uplifting and encouraging those within her care mothers can always seem to see the good good times are just around the corner. And they keep encouraging their children to continue looking up to God, who is the source of our strength, and, in, and in also in worry times. To all Christian mothers, God seems to say, it is, it is written in uh, Philippians 4, 4, uh, it's a real short verse, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. And also in Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve. The joy of the Lord is our strength. 
Thank God for joyous mothers, right? How many, how many times we have stopped trusting without mothers telling us, child, there's a better day coming. Just keep on trying. I love you and God loves you. How many of us have gone through that where, where, where moms are telling us, hey, you know what? There's, there's a better day coming. There's, there's saying that Mama says there'll be days like that, right? right. She tells us when there's going to be troubled times and there's going to be good times, right? But she doesn't focus on the, on the troubled times. She focuses on something that's going to be better. That's right. Right? And she, she continues to assure, assure us that she loves us and that God loves us. And that's, 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 an awesome, that's an awesome feeling to have a, a, a joyful mother. That's awesome. And the second characteristic I'm going to go through out is, is peace. So many people today are looking for peace, but do not know where to begin to find it, right? Peace does not mean everything is perfect in our lives, right? A lot of people think that it's, everything's peaceful, but you know, we're, everything's, hey, all right. The roses smell great, you know, nothing's going on wrong, but you know what? That doesn't mean that there's not peace, right? Peace comes from when we know that all things are under control. However, to know peace, guess what? We need to know God, mm. right? We need to know God. If we don't know God, we don't know peace. There's bumper stickers that say that. To know, you know, know peace, you need to know God, right? Mm. No peace, I think it says N-O, peace, and then it says no God. Mm. You know, or something like that it says on the bumper sticker right, right the other day. So we, as, as humans, we can never truly say that everything is under our control, right? Because we're not. We're weak. We're weak creatures. You know, you know we, we, we're not perfect. That's right. You know, we, we really mess, we kind of mess up daily, right? And that's, that's how we learn. And, and I, 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 uh, at work, uh, I have, I'm training a new, a new team member, and this guy doesn't know anything. And I tell him, hey, this is the time to make mistakes. This is the time to mess up, mm -hmm. you know, because there'll be a time when you're not going to be able to do that. You know, I'm, I tell them, I'm not perfect either. I still mess up, but mess up right now. This is the time. Ask questions and mess up. So, you know, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. So a lot of us don't know what's going to what happen next, right? We don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to know what's going to happen in 30 seconds from now. I don't know, right? And it's like a carpenter, right? We, uh, they hammer down all the boards around them, and then uh, a nail pops up, right? You're hammering over here. And there's a nail that pops up over there that you hammer, you know. And they just keep going back and forth, back and forth, right? It seems that we spend much of our lives nailing down boards that keep popping up, right? And, and it's just, that's just life, you know. That's just life. We, we spend a lot of time doing that instead of trusting in God. Yet God is not weak and frail as we are. He's, he's all powerful, right? He's almighty. God really does have things under, under his control. Nothing catches God off guard. He know, he's all-knowing, right? He's always prepared for everything. God, God knows what's going to happen to us, right? God knows what's going to happen in the next 30 seconds. To know peace, we have to place all our faith and our trust in God. And then Jesus, Jesus says in, in John, we can go to John 14, verse 27. Amen, amen, when you guys get there. Yeah, uh, John 14, verse 27. And it, and it reads, this is what Jesus, it's written, right? Jesus says, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Right? And then in, in Philippians, and we go to Philippians 4, 7. See, Jesus is saying he's already given us that peace, right? Not what the world gives us, right? So we can go also to Philippians 4, 7. And it reads, And the God of peace, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Right? That's the peace of God we should have. That's what we should have. 
knows permanently the peace of God abiding in her heart can keep her home a place of peace and serenity. A peaceful home is a wonderful place to return after a hard day of being in, this, in a society that is full of havoc. You know, all of us that go out to work and, and out, out and about, you know, we get full of this sure. stuff at, at, at the world, you know. But it's isn't it nice when you come home and you get that sense of peace, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's it's just, it's great to come home after you've been out in the world, mm -hmm. you know, eight, ten hours, some of us world, you know, go go home and it's a it's a peaceful feeling, right? You're at home and you're like, wow. You know, you know, mothers do that. Mothers tend to to make that home feel peaceful, you know. And we thank God for that, right? You know, a lot, a lot of times when we're out there, like we're out there in the world, you know, you know, we get we get upset, we get angry, you know, but there's a lot of things on how we have to react to that. But when we get home, you know, we we're, we're so, you know, bunched up with all that stuff, and we get home, and it's like, hey, you know, you know, maybe dinner's ready, or maybe you know, just you know, making you comfortable, you know, and loving on you, you know. You know, even the, like the kids that go to school, you know, I know you guys are full of peer pressure there at school, you know. You guys have all kinds of, you know, really bad peer pressure back when, more than when we were going back to school back in the early 80s. Some of us that are yeah. back then, right? Yeah. You know, I think the, the students now have it harder with uh, what's going on, but, you know, rest assured, when you come home, those of you all that, that have your moms there, you know, give them thanks because they got your back. But more importantly, God has your back. And then the third characteristic is thankfulness. We often, we often uh, are guilty of looking at the bad rather than the good, right? We 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 escalate the bad things than the good things, right? Something bad happens to you, oh, it's the worst thing that's ever happened in my life, right? And we don't even focus on the good things. If we, if we even stop and take a look, there's a lot more good things happening to us than bad things. That's right. You know, we focus on the, the negative instead of the positive. We tend to murmur rather to express our thankfulness. But as Christians, we, should, uh, we are encouraged to think that on, on things that are edifying and uplifting, mm -hmm. right? Yes. When we do this, we can have a good attitude regardless of what's going on, right? And, and that's what moms do. They 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 kind of you know you're having a bad day, you know. Hey, uh, hey, mijo, mija, you know what? Things will be all right. You know, uh, you're you're a great student. You're 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 a great worker. You're you're this and you're that. You're you know you're highly favored. You're encouraging your 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 child, right? And in Philippians 4, 8, if we can go to Philippians 4, 8, this is what I just uh, was saying here right now. Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 8. Okay. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Guess what? A lot of mothers tell us to think about these things. That we might not, we might not see it, right? They might not be in these exact words. But a lot of moms tell us that. Hey, you know what? Whatever's right. Don't be talking bad about some so and so. Don't be doing this. You know, tell them they're great or tell them this and tell them that. You know, uh, pray for them. You know, moms tell you these things. You know, I'm not saying dads don't do it, but. There's a special relationship with mom and their children, right? Than what there is with the dad, uh, with their children. And in, in Paul, Paul wrote these words while being confined in prison. Right? Wow, this guy's, he's in prison. And you know, back in the day, those prisons weren't, you know, like when you, know, you got air, air conditioning, you got three square meals, and you got cable TV. That's right. You know, they have it made. It's not a prison anymore. It's it's a hotel, you know. And you know, guess who paid for that? We paid for that. But back then, they were they were down there in the, in the slums, you know. Where, I mean, there was sewage and all kinds of rats and all kinds of stuff there. That was prison. You know, that that made you not want to go there, right? 
His circumstances did not hinder his view of being, uh, of view of his blessings. Thankfulness is a matter of being in control of your mind, right? Of our thoughts and keeping them upon a pile of things that we are blessed with, right? So we want to be thankful for what we have, right? Mm -hmm. And just, you know, if you look at that pile, that pile is pretty high. You know, it, it is very high. We just don't see it. You know, we're, 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 that, we're that generation that, you know, is a, is a visual thing, but you, know, you would see all the good things that happened to you. You would, you would see a big pile. It says, when we allow our minds to wander over into the negative realm and begin to focus on all the wrong things taking place, whether with us or with others, guess what happens? We get discouraged, right? We get depressed. And it's hard to climb out of that, that, that uh, boundless pit, right? It's hard to climb out of it. Once, once you go into those you know, depression stages and discouragement, and you see no, no uh, way out of it, you know, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to get out of that pit. However, a Christian mother will focus on the good things they have to enjoy, <coughs> right? They guide their, their children to thankfulness by, by being thankfulness themselves, right? They focus upon the good things in their children, and they, they major in those things, right? I, you know, I know my wife sometimes, uh, uh, my, my oldest son, she would always say, oh, you're a, you're a man of God, and this and that, and, and my oldest son would always say, oh, be quiet, mom, be quiet, you know, and she would, he would actually fight with her, or not, not physically, but argue, argue with her, to be quiet, to be quiet, and, and, and now I know, you know, she's speaking these things to him, he's, a change he's a changed man you know Amen. same thing with my my middle son and that's that's happening also and of course this oh one <laughs> this one's still work in progress but she's there um, <laughs> they do not totally ignore the bad things right mom don't they don't they don't say you know they're not gonna you know when we do bad guess what mom do they throw us a sure. sardine they'll throw us a sardine they'll throw us a chocolate they throw us <laughs> they, you know what they're trying to correct us right they're not ignoring that. They're not ignoring that we did bad, but they'll, they'll, they'll correct us, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they're not strong like, like the men are that you know, grab a belt and let, let you have it. They're going to throw anything they can to, to, to straighten you out, right? Mm -hmm. At that moment, right? They have good aim. Yeah, they have very good aim, right? <laughs> so uh, we have areas that, that we are weak and, and need work on, but uh, when a Christian mother keeps reminding her children of their good qualities, it gives them the courage to deal with the areas they need to work on. So you keep pumping that into your children. You know, hey, great job. You did this, you did that, you did that. So when they do find, they go into a difficult time, they're going to say, you know what? My mom says I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. My mom says this and my mom says this. You know, you know what? They're, they're going to go through those, those troubled times like a walk in the park. Because they're going to know who has their back. More importantly, God has their back, but you know what? Mom is there too, and dad is there too. And the way the way a mother a mother looks at life goes a long way in how their children face life as they as when they are adults. Thank God for mothers who are truly thankful for what they have, rather than complaining of the things they don't have. Right? A lot of times mothers go without, That's right. right? They go without, so they'll sacrifice to give to their kids or to their husband rather than they, they keep it for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, you know, earlier I said their job is demanding and a lot of times unrewarding, mm -hmm. right? That's right? And then the last characteristic of a mother is, and this is, the, to me, I think this is the most important one, dependence on all, upon Almighty God. Right? Dependency is an attitude that leans upon the strength, the wisdom, and the realization that we cannot survive without the help of someone or something mightier than we are. We, here we are referring to God being the source of our strength. Right? God is the source of our strength. N nothing else, right? But in, society, in our society today, many mothers are focused upon their own careers with the attitudes, I'm a woman. And I can do anything. It's good for a mother to be strong and to have self-confidence. But a Christian mother realizes 
that regardless of her strength, that she would be nowhere, she would be nowhere without God to lean on. Right? Amen. Doesn't matter what you have. So many mothers today are, are dependent upon drugs or alcohol, but thank God for the mothers that, that will show their children their dependence upon God. Christian, Christian mothers realize, except when, when, I, when I read that on Psalms, except God built the house, they make uh, the labor in vain that built it. So we know we built our house on the rock with God. You know, our, our labor is not in vain, right? That's right. Like the ones that are in the world that they try to build their house upon their own strength. It's like building your house on the sand, right? Mm -hmm. you don't, you're not building your house on the rock. You're building your, hand, your house on the sand. It's going to shift and it's going to move. It's going to become unstable. So thank, we, thank God for those, those mothers that, that help build our home on depending on God. So you know me, I like I like stories, um, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end with this story, and uh, it's actually a poem. I, I ran into this poem when I was reading. Uh, I, I kind of I, I said, wow, the title's kind of weird, but I started reading it, and, and and it's so true, right? And the title is Mean Moms, okay? Mean Moms, okay? <laughs> This, 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 this is not me, this is, just a, this is something I, I pulled out, okay? okay. Watch out, be careful. So, so pay attention here, pay be attention careful. to those, okay. This is, this is a, the poem, it goes, To all the mean moms of the world, and if you are not, if you aren't mean, it's never too late to change. Was your mom mean? I know mine was, since we had the meanest mother in the, in the whole world. While other kids ate candy for breakfast, we had to eat cereal, egg, and toast. When other kids had a Pepsi and a Twinkie for lunch, we had to eat sandwiches. And, and, uh, and you can guess, our mother fixed us dinner that was different from what the other kids had to. Ooh, that's, that's real mean, right? <laughs> mother insisted on knowing where we were at all times. You would think that we were convicts in prison. Uh, she had to know who our friends were and what we were doing with them. She insisted that if we said we would be gone for an hour, get a little of this, guys, we'd be gone for an hour or less. That's right. right? We weren't gone for an hour and 10 minutes, hour and five minutes, or two hours or three hours. We were gone for an hour or less, right? Mm -hmm. We were ashamed to admit it, but she had the nerve to break the child labor laws by making us work. <laughs> get a little, she made us that we had to wash the dishes we had to make our beds we had to learn how to cook we had to vacuum the floor do laundry and all sorts of cruel jobs right I think she would lie awake at night thinking of more, uh, more things for us to do that's pretty mean right she always insisted us she always insisted on telling us the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth by the time we were teenagers, she could read our minds. Wow. <laughs> Their life was really tough, right? Mother won't let us, let our friends just honk the horn uh, when they drove up. They had to come in some, uh, so she could meet them. While everyone else could date when they were 12 or 13, that's today, right? Mm -hmm. 12, right? We had to wait till we were 16 because our mothers we missed out on, out on a lot of things other kids experience. <coughs> not, none of us had ever been caught shoplifting, vandalizing other, other people's property, or even arrested uh, of any crime. It is her fault, right? We never got drunk, took up smoking, stayed out all night, or many other things kids did. Now we have left home, we are God-fearing, educated, honest adults, we are doing our best to be mean parents like our moms. <laughs> I think it is what's wrong with the world today. It just doesn't have enough mean moms anymore. Come on. That's right. That was, that's the whole point. It wasn't me, okay, because it's like just a poem. But, but I, it has so much truth to it, right? It, that's it, right. it, has, it has a lot of meat on, in this poem that, you know, it's just, it caught me, right? And I started realizing, okay, these are the things 
when I was growing up, my mom did, right? I know how to clean, I know how to, I know how to do all that stuff, and I thank my mom for that. I know how to do all the stuff that I thank my dad for, too. But you know what? Moms are awesome. Moms are awesome. To all mothers here this morning, allow me to remind you of something. I know you're already aware of so much, because moms know everything, right? You, you, can't never, you can't pull a fast one on a mom, because you know what? Sooner or later, she's going to find out. Gonna, you know what? You did that, right? What? You told you. Right? <laughs> this is sad. As you look about your home, you will see the things you work hard to obtain. You know, furniture, decorations, cars, stuff like that. But the greatest value in your home are your children, right? And my, my, me, you know, especially the young, young parents and the ones that are about to be parents, please continue to handle them with care. It don't matter how old you are. You know, I, I talk to my parents like every other day, you know, and, and it's, you know, they, they tell me, they give me advice or they'll call. I just call to see how they're doing. I end up staying sometimes 30, 40 minutes talking to my mom. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy those times because, you know, you have to. That's what, that's what they, they, they instilled in us, right? It's family, right? And we want to, you know, continue to do that. Share with my children and when my grandchildren come, uh, share with them, you know, mm -hmm. share with them. But uh, I just want to wish all of you moms a happy Mother's Day. Have a blessed day. And the mothers to be, I know Victoria, Soon will be the next year. We'll be we'll be saying here, we'll be saying some stuff. You know, take take advice from all these mothers that are here. You know, you know, like they said, you know, it, it, it takes a, a village to raise a child, right? Mm -hmm. So we are a village here. So uh, with this, I'll I'll end and I'll and I'll uh, give it to.